Hey Mod Maniacs, Mo Madden you here, and uh, this video is to give you an overview of a new tool I just released called Native Workbench. Uh, the idea behind Native Workbench is to give you a way to write script code and immediately see the results in the game. Uh, I've gotten requests for this, and I use it myself. In fact, uh, I find new and interesting uses for it every day. So, so the first thing to notice here is that it runs in its own window. Uh, to do that smoothly, and you can see I'm transitioning from the window to the game, you need to have some settings made in the game and uh, read the install notes to see what game settings those are and uh, you'll be on your way and you don't have to worry about it going behind the screen. All right, there are multiple parts uh, to this tool and I'll explain each part. Uh, just note that I'll be coding in C Sharp, but uh, it's not so complex, so you should be able to convert to your language C++ LEA easily. Okay, so from the bottom here, We've got the output window. Uh, that's going to return values and compile errors, if there are any. The intermediate window is, uh, as the name implies, allows you to write scripting code and see results immediately. I'll be demoing all, demoing all these. Okay. There is the on-tick window. Uh, I will explain what the on-tick window is and the importance of the on-tick window. If you're new to modding, you need to understand the on-tick uh, very carefully because it is a very critical piece of mod making. Next, we have the properties area uh, that lets you store code in small small amounts, uh, real-time code, where you can store things that change uh, over time quickly, like coordinates or booleans or other things that are basically real-time, where you need to see what's going on in the game in real-time. And at the top here, we've got some buttons to add the code quickly to each window. Uh, I won't talk about these two checkboxes in this video yet, but uh, we will get to those. At the very top, we have the natives. Okay, they are separated by type, alpha ordered, and you just can pick the type, and then you get the uh, names under that type, and these are kept up to date. Uh, they are uh, basically just parsed from natives.h, but uh, they are in alphabetical order, and surprisingly, I like alphabetical order uh, instead of uh, having to go sort through the web page. Okay, so. Um, one other thing to mention, all the code we're going to write here today and all the code you will write in these windows is auto-saved and loaded. Uh, it is in the any file. Just make sure you back it up. Okay? All right, let's do something simple. Um, something really simple like taking down the radar. And that you'll be able to find in the UI group. Let's take a look here. It's in the UI group. Go down to UI. And it is literally display radar. Where are you? There you are. Okay. And we actually say add to immediate. And boom, it pulls right into there, drops it right in. Now, uh, there it is again. The uh, This is the scripthook.net version uh, of the code. Now, it's asking for a Boolean. And in this case, uh, we want to take the radar down. So we're going to put it to zero here for the Boolean. We're going to click Run. And it's gone. I uh, want to bring it back. We set it to a 1, Run, and it comes back. So what's going on here? Uh, behind the scenes, actually, this code in this window is getting compiled in real time. And getting compiled in real time and run in real time is the whole point of this tool. Uh, it's just very convenient, very fast way. It's a scratch pad way of, of getting your ideas down, trying them, and being able to see them in the game. Okay? So there you go with that. Uh, okay, let's try something a little similar. I just want to show you uh, something similar, but there's a significant difference. Uh, we're going to do uh, the cache. Cache display is upper right hand corner. Uh, so let's uh, grab that. It's also in the UI group. The display uh, cache, which is right there. I will add it to immediate. It pops in. So I'll call it looking for a bool. In this case, we want to show cache. So I will, oops, I will put it, uh, set it to a 1 to display cache. Uh, here's a nice little feature. If you only want to run a certain part of the code, you can just highlight that and it will run that part of the code. But for now, I'm just going to clear this out and so that we only have uh, the display cache, and I'm going to click Run, and nothing happens. Okay, we don't have any errors. Um, if we had compile errors, okay, uh, we would get compile errors, but we do not have compile errors. So what's going on here? Well, this is a very significant thing. Um, this is a real introduction of what OnTick is all about. In some cases, like the radar, you instruct the game code to actually put the window up or down, and it has to draw it every frame. But there are cases where the actual thing that you want to see, you have to put it 
in a position where it will write every single frame. And just display cache happens to be one of them. It's kind of surprising because it's sort of similar to the radar. But guess what? It has to be run every single frame. So we're going to take it out of the immediate. We're going to put it to the on tick. Now you'll see it won't show up immediately because uh, whenever you add or uh, edit the on tick, it will uh, un unclick the uh, the enable. So and then the same goes for properties. And the reason to do that is so that you know you don't it doesn't uh, jump or jitter. So just a, just a convention that I found nice so that uh, you're not trying to do something in the middle and have it glitchy. Uh, so okay, so now we put it from the uh, immediate to the on tick, and I put that on and lo and behold there it is in the upper right hand corner and what that's actually doing now is the same idea it's compiling it but in the case of immediate it only ran once uh, when it's in the on tick window it runs at frame rate and uh, we're right now we're at uh, if I look around it would be 80 or 100 frames uh, so again that is something that is very different and you will, as we go we'll see what has to go into the on tick and what can uh, live in the immediate okay so that's that and notice if I unclick it goes away I didn't have to change that to a zero because I'm no longer running on tick when I have the button when the uh, checkbox unchecked okay um, let's go move on to the properties window all right properties um, as I said things that are typically uh, shown uh, in real time so very classic the player position so let's just we right click for sorry I rushed that quickly you click the row you want, you right click, you get this dialog. What do you want to say? You want to say player position. Okay, I'm going to just do this by hand. Um, and I'm going to say I want to return. Uh, again, I'm going to use the .NET version, game.player.character.position. Okay. So I say okay to that. Now um, again, just like the on tick, you do have to enable that. Okay. And uh, if you notice, the character wasn't here. Uh, let's bring Franklin up here because we is we're shut him off temporarily because he likes to use his phone way too much. But here's our Franklin. He's a man. There he is, and he's going to start walking. And as you can see, the player position is changing. Now it's not changing at the rate. Uh, the same rate as a frame rate and I did this on purpose because I didn't want the properties area to consume a lot of time it's very important to know that when you're in an on tick handler or meaning the code that runs during on tick you have the game uh, basically by the short hairs um, <laughs> uh, putting it bluntly you can stop the game if you get yourself into a situation that it takes too long or uh, you know your code is in a loop uh, but that's something really important for people who are new to modding on ticks been around forever and it's very important to know that uh, you cannot hold it hostage. So something just simple. Um, we're going to be putting some other stuff in there uh, that's a little bit more interesting than position, but position is pretty pretty critical usually. People like to know um, you know where their setups are. Um, you can also put some booleans in here. All right. So let's um, let's clear the area again here. Let's just bring uh, this one. We right click on this one. Actually, this one I'm actually going to use the uh, add to button so uh, I want to do let's say just walking running and sprinting something real simple so I go into the AI group which is the position is ped walking okay and I will add that to this row so add, click the row add the properties again it's not enabled yet we'll get to that next let's say um, okay is running uh, let's see AI where'd he go is ped running all right I will add that to this row and just I don't know, is sprinting and these are just examples of course you've got the whole thing to your disposal whatever you want to put in here you put in here uh, put that here and add properties now all this is really uh, did was if I right click and show you what code it is it's just saying return uh, the call to the native and uh, a good time to introduce this I have included the defaults for ped and for player so capital P ped and lowercase p ped and capital P player they are built in you can just use them you don't have to say game dot player character every time 
and I'll get to some other built-ins uh, in the next video but for now just know that I didn't have to touch this code because PED is already set for me uh, behind the scenes okay all right so I um, can enable my uh, properties window all right I'm going to unclear the area and here's Franklin right here and we're just going to make him walk and see uh, the is PED walking has turned to true now something nice and handy here I put this in as a feature kind of like you can enable the uh, colors so that you can see when things change and we get him to run now he's sprinting now then he's running and then he's walking so you can see very nicely that um, one of the goals here was to put in some of the unknowns uh, in this properties window and try to determine some of the boolean values that return from unknowns to determine what they really do so but again uh, you know we'll see from uh, the next video that th this is a uh, more useful for targeting entities and some other things which I'll show in the next video. Um, so that's essentially it. That's the uh, overview of Native Workbench. I uh, hope you found this useful and um, check out my next video where we do some more complicated stuff and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.